All right, welcome back to the bench. So today we have uh, some mail. Uh, unfortunately, this is not given or donated or anything like that. This is purchased, uh, fair and square, from uh, a certain individual. So uh, we'll take a look at who this is from. This is from uh, Mr. David Jones from the EEB blog. And the only reason I'm showing his address is because it's online anyway and available. So uh, send him some stuff. Um, so let's open it up and see what we got here. <clears throat> Although I suspect some people will probably already have guessed. <clears throat> Definitely my knife is not as big, but it's got lab written on it, so, you know, hey. Because I have multiple knives like these and they tend to walk away, so. <clears throat> and here we go. Let me address this stuff. The poubelle. What we have here is a multimeter, because honestly, I don't have enough, so anymore. And uh, this is the BM230 series. Is that a, I think it's the BM235. And uh, oh, they're, they're BM235, right? <clears throat> and um, there are actually a couple of models of this. Uh, they don't actually have the bigger model, but um, this is apparently the uh, the top of the range of the BM230. Uh, great, I'm not going to go through all of them, but it's got a lot of features, as well as a couple of other features that were uh, added as requested by Dave. So, uh, right off the bat, packaging's taking a bit of a walloping, but that's okay. And what we got here, we have some very, very, very nice swanky probes, which I have been using mine, <coughs> uh, and these are. Uh, sad they don't have the actual name on them. It's too bad. Um, but these these are the same probes. Uh, these are a bit worn and are missing. No, the caps are on here. <coughs> you can see them like that. But um, very nice pointy little probes. A little fat around here, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. With the little uh, protective, high voltage protective thing. So very nice, very nice pliable uh, silicone, 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 whatever, silicone. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and rubber grips, whatever. Very nice. Very, very nice little set of probes. Very uh, happy they were included. Anyway, inside this package. So, um, and I, I forget what these ran me, but they're, you know, like probably like 15 bucks or something like that, or 10 bucks, or whatever, but well worth it if you uh, are looking for set of probes. Very good set of probes. What else we got in here? Oh, hello. Touch probe. Uh, these looks about par for the course. Um, not so bad. I have a really, really, really silly one here on the uh, Tektronix meter uh, that I got with, I think, my Uni T. But, oops, don't want that meter to fall down. Um, yeah, so as I said, real cheap and, you know, garbagey one. So, yeah, I mean, these are just, you know, these are awful. I should probably just throw these away. Or, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so I've used this a bit. Whatever. So, nice to have another one of these. And I have a fluke one. Uh, I ended up here. Uh, a little grungy, probably needs to be a bit more clean. But anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's probably fairly uh, resilient. Anyway, so this is another one. Uh, but these are all K-type, if I remember correctly, so they're all interchangeable. So, I'll go put a lot of stuff away. So that is one of my pet peeves, things that aren't put away. And, manual and the meter itself and you'll notice it's in that stylish blue and not that red that's cool <clears throat> so I've been looking for one of uh, these Bryman meters for a while or I should say I'm not looking I've been looking to buy one for a while and I you know I have a ton of other meters I just couldn't really kind of say to myself well I'll pay another 150 bucks for a meter because this is actually one of the most expensive meters I've bought <clears throat> um, New at any rate. This is, only, this is the only other new meter that I bought, which I think was about again 130 or 120 dollars or whatever it is, um, from a local business ish around here. Anyway, so uh, let's uh, go and see what's going on here. Uh, people have posted uh, sort of tear down pictures of this already, so <clears throat> I'm not sure I'm going to do that. But uh, it is a very tiny little meter. Oh, with batteries already included. That's cool. Hmm. 
Very nice. Oh yeah. Hang on a second. Uh, so I don't know if you can hear that, but it's... Uh, It's very painfully obvious that this are wine from the backlight. And uh, it seems to increase in pitch, which is interesting over time. Uh, over the few seconds it was on, it went from sort of a lower pitched wine, and the, the pitch increased uh, in steps. So I'm not sure why it's doing that, but uh, I'll take that off because honestly, everybody always gets annoyed at the screen protectors, right? So this is kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of functionality in here. There's a uh, so there's a voltage detect. Kind of cool. So that's uh, that's kind of neat. So it's got the. Um, It's supposed to have the jack sense here, but maybe if I put, uh, uh, let's, let's go pull these open and see, uh, yeah, that's true, it must, it must sense it if it's in the wrong jack. <clears throat> oh, and of course, it must sense it if, it, if you're going to do a voltage measurement too, that's the other thing, it must be, so if you have this in here, there you go. Interesting. So a few, a few interesting things here. That was a banana plug sort of works nicely. A uh, bit of a tight fit. All right. So we got um, everything plugged in here. So let's go take a quick look at this. Obviously, the first thing to do is try it out with a, uh, a voltage source. So I have a, a volt reference here from uh, Heo Kizin. Uh, which I have no idea if that's actually how you pronounce it, but <clears throat> anyway, we'll say. Um, and my apologies if I mispronounced that. Um, so it was calibrated 2013, uh, November 58. Pretty sure it's not 58, but anyway. Sometime in November, uh, apparently on an Agilent uh, 34401A, two, five, decimal points, so that would be uh, to 10 microvolt, <coughs> uh, a 10 microvolt resolution, and then on the 10 volt range to, uh, oh no, so, sorry, 10 microvolt is still, at uh, 21 degrees Celsius. So let's uh, check out what the temperature is here. <coughs> uh, first, silly, there's no built-in temperature. <laughs> so let's go ahead and... Uh, Take our Tektronix here, and it's saying in the labs that are roughly 19 degrees, give or take. Let's see that. So, the backlight doesn't help either. <laughs> All right, 19 degrees. <clears throat> cool. So, let's go and see if we can't. Um, do a couple of voltage measurements here and see how she fares. So, put that in there, put that in there, and this is the 2.5 volt measurement range. Hmm, okay, uh, that's a little weird. <coughs> Oh, okay. I'm not really sure what the, hell the heck's going on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this, and I'm going to just... Okay. So this one, this meter, is reading 2.500 volts, which uh, should be about right. It's measured at 2.501, so <clears throat> well within the uh, spec. 
So we'll switch to the 5 volt range, and we're using 5.003, and this one was supposed to be 5.00309. So that looks <coughs> just fine. 7 volt range, 7.50, which is fine, because it's 7.501. And the 10 volt range, 10 volts on the dot. And this one was 10.0027, so no worries. Clearly, does just fine. I don't know what was going on. There's maybe a little bit of a, an issue with the contact. It's not a huge problem. Next, <clears throat> let's do the standard. Um, I should probably uh, tilting bail. This is a little silly, but whatever. Oh, hey, uh, there we go. <clears throat> uh, that's a lot better. Okay. So uh, we'll get our uh, 10K resistor, which uh, is basically is something similar to what Dave has, one part per million per degree centigrade, um, plus minus 0.01%. So that means, technically speaking, we should be measuring 10K down to um, got to get this right. <laughs> so this is 10,000 ohms. And of course, I labeled the, the labels wrong here, kind of a little bit. But anyway, that's supposed to be the uh, ten uh, co comma, not like ten. Oh, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, we should be reading uh, basically, yeah, ten ten thousand point zero ohms, and then plus or minus a little bit on the. On that. So let's go let's switch it to ohms. <clears throat> Although in this for this instrument, I think uh, we'll be lucky. Something. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nine point nine nine. Eh, close enough. Probably should be a bit closer than that, but yeah, whatever. I'm not going to complain too too much. <clears throat> so let's go put this into. Uh, this is nice. I like this. The glowing backlit thing, that's cool. And here's something that's interesting. So let's go put the actual backlight on. You see it? Now it's what it still blinks. It still flickers. That's cool. <clears throat> so and it's Perhaps not the fastest. It's latching, but so it starts missing when you go a bit faster. But you know, hey, <clears throat> it's one hundred fifty dollars. I'm not going to complain too too much, especially with all the extra fun functionality that's on here. All right, so let's get in a capacitor and see how if we can measure. Um, That's our diode measurements. Let's go measure some capacitance. So this is zero now. So we should be able to measure a 0.1 mic. No problem, I would think. What do we got here? We have 100 mic. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can do 100 mic. So I get the uh, get this the right way. And look at that. So we measure. 104, 104 microfarads on 100 microfarad capacitor. That seems to be reasonably good. I don't have an actual capacitor um, uh, standard. I'm not really sure it would make a lot of sense to even have one. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> let's see what else do we have here. That's kind of neat. Uh, amps range. So actually, let's go test that. That'll be the next thing we we'll test. <clears throat> well, actually, <coughs> we'll go fire up the uh, dynamic load. Put this on the high side. We'll see that on the high side. We'll put it in the we'll put that in the amps range. Yes, 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 yes. And it's by default. In the, I wonder. Hang on a second. Oh, now that's neat. Haha. -ha. Make sure I didn't. 
So, that's really cool. <laughs> so, automatically, it's deciding whether or not I need to switch to um, milliamps or amps by simply which detecting which jack it's in. And of course, it goes there. It's going to be in milliamp microamps. And if I do this, it's going to let you know it's, you put in the wrong one. So it's kind of cool. So it's it's using the uh, jack sense detect here, the lead detect to automatically switch it to the right, uh, you know, milliamp or uh, amp range. Which that's kind of cool. You know, I'm alright with that. I'm alright with that quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Turn that one on. So we'll do this. That I need one more lead. Of course, I won't find one. That's a huge hunk of lead, but that's okay. Uh, actually, oh, there we go. That will do nicely. So we'll go ahead and plug uh, uh, that to there. We'll turn the voltage up, and we're going to turn it to. Uh, I'll put it at, I think the minute was 4 volts, so I'll put this one at 5 volts. Set the current to near as, makes no difference. Turn the load on, bring that all the way down, bring this up, and we'll crank the load up and see what we got. So, I'm measuring uh, on the power supply, it's measuring at uh, 0.26 of an amp and on my electronic load it's also measuring 0.26 of an amp and on the meter it's measuring 0.26 of an amp it's pretty cool crank this all the way up 1.46 are rounding up a little bit so that's uh, that's really nice, that's groovy so I'll turn the load off for a second put this into the milliamps range turn the load on and we'll slowly bring this up. I don't know what the maximum range for this is, but we'll find out. It does 100 milliamps. 200 milliamps. What's the maximum fuse for this? 600 milliamps, it says. So I imagine you can at least do 400 and be all right. There we go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the ranging is a little slow, but nothing major, <clears throat> nothing major at all. So that's cool. That's pretty groovy. I like that. So all the basic features and functionality work. I'm not going to test the microamp because it's going to be a bit more complicated. Um, but that's pretty cool. So nice little meter and uh, I mean you know my hands aren't huge uh, and it fits you know it's uh fits nicely into your hand I am really curious about that uh, whale and that screech so uh, there's been a few a bit of discussion uh, on the EED blog forum about that as to what's causing that um, I suspect it's probably just a badly specced capacitor uh, in the boost converter that's you know starting to hit the audio you know hitting its audio range uh, or sorry, or inductor, I should say, not just capacitor. It could be inductor or capacitor. Um, maybe an inductor, actually, now that I think about it, because it'll vibrate. Uh, it'll, it'll probably resonate with the uh, switching frequency. But anyway, so, uh, and that's acting as a little miniature amplifier and just uh, <laughs> wailing itself uh, when you uh, power up the, uh, the, uh, the backlight. So, all in all, nice little meter. Uh, that wailing sound will get very annoying and I'm 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 not young but uh, I can clearly hear that I can clearly hear that hear that from a foot you know, well, at least two two feet away or something like that you know so you know, that if it's on my bench so here, I'll just turn this on yeah I mean I have <clears throat> the um, the forced air system in my house see
Yeah, so the force air system at my house is, is going in the background, so I don't know if that comes through on the uh, on the camera. Might be, maybe not. But I can clearly hear this, or I should say, I can clearly hear the uh, the backlight whine over that. And it's the same kind of white noise, sort of in the background. You just kind of don't notice it after a while. But that's very high pitched and uh, very noticeable. There's, there's also only the LEDs are also only on one side. And the pitch, like I said, changes as you turn it on. So right now, it's sort of, it's sort of, uh, you know, steadied out at some value here. I'll put it near the camera so you can hear maybe. So yeah, hopefully that came through. But yeah, it's, it's uh, that that. Maybe someone with younger ears who's more sensitive to this would actually be very annoying. Um, that's almost annoying enough for me to say that I prefer probably not to use the backlight. Uh, and I'll probably only use it when I need to. That's uh, sort of the level of annoying. <clears throat> and here's something that's interesting. Um, so of course, this is something that's really stupid, I just noticed it now. But uh, it's, it's a nice little feature. So, uh, and I don't know if it's the same on all Brahmin meters, but when you go to take the uh, the tilting bail out, the flute, for example, has this kind of thing where you can get your fingers underneath it, right? So you can see here, there's a little thing you can get your finger to kind of claw it open. Um, if we look at, for example, look at the Tektronix, right? Um, there's, yeah, you, you can you can get your, your finger underneath it, but, you know, there's not, there's not much place to sort of loop and hook your finger out from underneath it, so that's kind of annoying. If we go look at the Agilent, for example, it's the same, well, there's a little bit, there's a little bit here, so it's not so bad, but uh, it's, you know, of similar annoyance. But the uh, Bribin's really nice, it's got like this sort of uh, chain, not chamfered, but uh, uh, angled, I forgot the word for it now, but anyway, the angled uh, surface on the inside, so when it's closed like this, it's flat, but you can sort of get your finger underneath it like this to pull it off, so, you know, Silly little thing, but uh, very cool. Very cool, and that's uh, how many batteries? Two AA batteries, uh, AAA batteries. Sorry, so it's uh, it's, <laughs> it's a fairly uh, lightweight with respect to power too. So interesting. So there you go, the EV blog, the first EV blog uh, meter, again branded EV blog, and um, nice small little meter, uh, UL listed as all. It seem uh, so far as I've seen all as all Brahmin meters are. Uh, 10 amp HP, uh, HPC or HRC fuse with a 600 milliamp HRC fuse. The, um, there's been some uh, comments on the forum that uh, on the EV blog forum that there's actually a 400 milliamp fuse inside here. So I don't know what the deal is with that. I have not opened mine, so I don't actually know if that's the case. Um, I would suspect it probably is, although I don't, you know, don't know if it's a problem or not. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. Um, Thing to hang on, so you can hang it on the wall, and it's nice. This is going to be a nice addition. Uh, this, so this is probably destined uh, for work for me. I'll probably, uh, or maybe not, depending, <laughs> because actually at work we're thinking maybe of getting one of these. So, uh, oh, but I've waffled on for 15 minutes already. So I'm going to uh, close it out here and say uh, this is pretty cool. I like it. It's a uh, nice little meter. Uh, it's nice and small. It's definitely one of those uh, things you just kind of throw in your uh, throw in your bag and go. And um, I like it a lot. So uh, definitely a fun little, fun little gadget and tool. Take care. Thanks for listening. Cheers.